All right, so we have some actual real serious news to report here with Brian Flores suing the NFL, and there's some pretty serious allegations that have came out. So uh, I'm going to be going over those, but I want to be very clear uh, at the beginning of this video. These are still at this point just allegations. We have not been able to fact check or prove any of this. More facts will come out as the trial goes on. But anyway, here's some of the stuff that this... Uh, whole thing talks about. And I want to be uh, clear about a couple things right up front. One, I have edited a couple of these documents, not to take anything out, but just for formatting reasons. There's some with big spaces, so I edited those around. So uh, nothing has been edited out, although I have changed the formatting a little bit on a couple of them. So just being clear there. Anyways, the beginning of this talked about how there aren't very many black people who are currently in the NFL. You know, the key one, of course, only one of the NFL's 32 teams employ a black head coach. You also see them go on to, you know, all these other different coordinating jobs, and you see relatively low percentages considering the fact that the pool of players is about 70% black. I'm not going to touch on this stuff too much. I don't think it's too relevant, but this is kind of you know, setting the tone, this is the basis of the allegations. This paragraph, I think, is really wild if true. Again, still just an allegation from Flores, but here's what it says. In January 2022, Mr. Flores, who spent three years as head coach of the defendant Miami Dolphins, found himself without a job. He was fired by the Dolphins after leading the team to its first back-to-back -back winning seasons since 2003. The purported basis for his termination was alleged poor collaboration, in reality, the writing had been on the wall since Flores' first season as head coach of the Dolphins when he refused his owner's directive to tank for the first pick in the draft. Indeed, during the 2019 season, Miami's owner, Stephen Ross, told Mr. Flores that he would pay him $100,000 for every loss, and the team's general manager, Chris Greer, told Mr. Flores that Steve was mad that Mr. Flores' success in winning games that year was compromising the team's draft position. Also, I think worth noting that the Cincinnati Bengals that year, who got the first overall pick at a certain point, made a questionable coaching decision to bench Andy Dalton, despite him seemingly being their best quarterback. They would go on to get the first overall pick and draft Joe Burrow, who has now led them to a Super Bowl. To my knowledge, it is not against NFL rules to tank explicitly, but that doesn't mean that they you know, don't frown upon it, and they could still offer a fine if they find this to be true. We just don't know. I, I haven't seen that I haven't seen that anywhere. I couldn't find anything. So I couldn't confirm or deny if it is against the rules to intentionally tank. So this is something that I think that we all kind of knew probably existed, but it's still interesting to see it actually happen and be, you know, come out to light as a legit allegation, at least. This next one is also very interesting. What this reads is after after the end of the 2019 season, Mr. Ross began to pressure Mr. Flores to recruit a prominent quarterback in violation of league tampering rules. Mr. Flores repeatedly refused to comply with these improper directives. Undeterred, in the winter of 2020, Mr. Ross invited Mr. Flores onto a yacht for lunch. Shortly after he arrived, Mr. Flores, or excuse me, Mr. Ross told Mr. Flores that the prominent quarterback was conveniently arriving at the marina. Obviously, Mr. Ross had attempted to set up a purposely impromptu meeting between Mr. Flores and a prominent quarterback. Mr. Flores refused the meeting and left the yacht immediately. After the incident, Mr. Flores was treated with disdain and held out as someone who is non-compliant and difficult to work with. When I hear prominent quarterback who is a free agent in 2020, my mind immediately went to Tom Brady, right? That obviously makes some sense, but I would mention that with Brady, uh, you know, it was at least a let. He said that the only two teams to offer him a deal were the Buccaneers and the Chargers, so that would go in the face of that. Still possible, but I don't know. There also were Drew Brees, Cam Newton, Dak Prescott, uh, Ryan Tannehill, Drew Brees, uh, to name a few that could also probably fit that prominent quarterback uh, title. It would go on to say, from that point forward, Mr. Flores was ostracized and uh, ultimately he was fired. He was subsequently defamed throughout the media and the league as he was labeled by the Dolphins brass as someone who was difficult to work with. This is reflective of an all too familiar angry black man stigma that is often casted upon black men who are strong in their morals and convictions while white men are coined as passionate for this very same attributes. This next part, also very fascinating. So uh, there's a little bit uh, before this, but I think I can, we can get it here. So on Wednesday, January 26, 2022, so this is just, you know, not even a week ago, Mr. Flores was forced to sit through a dinner uh, with 
the new Giants general manager, knowing that the Giants had already selected Mr. Dabble, or excuse me, pronounced Dable, but continuing. Much worse, on Thursday, January 27th, Mr. Flores had to give an extensive interview for a job that he already knew he would not get. An interview that was held for no reason other than the Giants to demonstrate falsely to the league commissioner, Roger Goodell, and the public at large that it was in compliance with the Rooney rule. The Rooney rule, of course, being the rule where you have to uh, at least interview a person of color for a head coaching job. The Giants would likely have gotten away with this most insidious form of discrimination if New England Patriots coach Bill Belichick had not mistakenly disclosed it to Mr. Flores in the below text messages. So we have some text messages from Bill Belichick here. So here are the text messages. Sorry if it's a little bit small. I zoomed in as much as I could. But Bill Belichick is the one on the left. And then you have Brian Flores is the one on the right. Uh, so Belichick says, sounds like you have landed. Congrats. Then Flores says, did you hear something I didn't? Belichick responds, Giants, exclamation point, and question marks. Flores says, I have an interview on Thursday. I think I have a shot at it. Belichick responds, got it. I hear from Buffalo and the New York Giants that you are their guy. Hope it works out if you want it to. Flores then says, that's definitely what I want. I hope you're right, coach. Thank you. Then responds again, coach, are you talking to Brian Flores or Brian D Dable? Just making sure. Belichick responds, and pardon the French here, but I fucked this up. I double-checked and misread the text. I think they are naming Dable. Sorry about that, BB. Flores responds, thanks, Bill, uh, which I'm assuming BB stands for Bill Belichick and not baby, but, uh, you know, don't know that for sure. Again, have to be very clear here. I don't know if these are doctored in any way or not. Uh, at this point, I have no reason to believe that they are, but there still is a potential for that. It's not like anyone has come out, any third per party has come out and confirmed that these are legit. But again, we have no reason to believe that they're not legit either. And that is something that if it is untrue, I imagine will come to light pretty quickly. So it seems like it'd be a, a foolish thing to fake there. But still, just trying to be very clear on what exactly we're looking at. Finally, uh, it would go on to say, incredibly, this was not Mr. Flores' first sham interview that was only held in an effort to comply with the Rooney rule. Indeed, in 2019, Mr. Flores was scheduled to interview with the Denver Broncos. However, the Broncos' then general manager, John Elway, president and chief executive officer Joe Ellis, and others showed up an hour late to the interview. They looked completely disheveled, and it was obvious that they had been drinking heavily the night before. It was clear from the substance of the interview that Mr. Flores was interviewed only because of the Rooney Rule and that the Broncos never had any intention to consider him as a legit candidate for the job. Shortly thereafter, Vic Fangio, a white man, was hired to be the head coach of the Broncos. So this one isn't exactly him coming out with, you know, saying this is what they did and this is how I have proof that what they did was wrong. It's more of a, he felt like they didn't really take the interview seriously. And if you do show up an hour late and, you know, clearly don't even look prepared for the interview, he has reason to think that way. Granted, you could argue, hey, the Broncos have been incompetent. Maybe that's just how they operate things. But still, uh, I think that, you know, there might be something there, but that one, not quite as, uh, you know, I don't think as concrete as the other ones, if what he's saying is true. So yeah, listen, uh, obviously this is a very touchy subject in a lot of ways, but let's just talk about, let's, for, ex for example, let's just assume everything is true, because I think that's a good way to talk about this argument at first, and then we'll say how much do we know about if it's true or not. So if everything is true, uh, again, even forgetting about the was he discriminated based on race, you have people who aren't following protocols. And listen, I think we all knew that pe certain times people would use the Rooney rule as just a way to, you know, to, they already knew who they were going to hire. But since you have to hire a person of color, you do it anyways. But I would still say you should still take it seriously. I mean, for someone like Flores, like, obviously, it means a lot to these guys to get an opportunity to be a head coach. Uh, don't disrespect their time. Uh, I think that that's a big thing. And maybe they just need to get rid of the Rooney Rule altogether because it's clearly not working. Maybe that's just the solution. But while we still have the Rooney Rule in place, if you're an owner or a GM, the least you can do is, you know, give him the time of day and give him a 0.1% chance of getting it. Don't just have it be zero. Don't literally already have your mind made up before it even happens, which I guess you could even argue with the Bill Belichick uh, text message. Maybe Bill Belichick thought that their mind was made up, but it wasn't. There, There is that out there, but that, that feels like something we can all kind of get behind. Like, you know, uh, don't disrespect Flores' time. Also, the 
paying for tanking, I think is is fascinating. I mean, again, I don't know if they've ever explicitly said you can't do that, but there's something that does feel a little bit wrong about paying a head coach to not try. And it also does kind of feel like, you know, part of, I remember when I defended Flores when he got fired, thinking, why did he get fired? People did throw in my face the fact that he had a really bad first season. So it, it probably would have been thrown in even more in my face had he been intentionally tanking. And it also makes me wonder, well, who is intentionally tanking then? You know, so there's some fascinating stuff. I'm sure, you know, it's going to be chaos in the comments below. But I just wanted to give everyone the information uh, at hand. And hopefully you guys at least now know what's going on because it is interesting stuff. So, yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, or at least learned something from it. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And, of course, as always, thanks for watching.